it's Tom Christie back in the Carbon Workshop. This will be session six of carving a Drake canvas back magnum cork bodied hunting decoy. And in this video, we're going to seal the bird. I've already started that process and I'll talk through what I've done so far. We're going to seal up the keel, make sure it's watertight. Then we're going to work with the lead and figure out where the lead should be in the keel for this bird to float properly. So we'll do some test flotation to make sure the bird is uh, riding flat the way we want it on the water and then it's at the proper depth. And we have to make sure that this bird is going to self right because uh, many of the contests require that the bird be put in the tank or the pool upside down and it has to flip and self right. Um, so let's get started on that first. I want to do some sealing of the keel and, and make sure it's watertight. I'm going to be using uh, for this demonstration Minwax Helmsman Spar Urethane. It's designed to handle outdoor conditions. Um, that's just what I've ch chosen to put on this bird. There are many different uh, waterproof materials that you might choose to put on your hunting decoy. I've heard of Golden GAC 700. If you can find it, is a great sealer for cork. There used to be a commercially available cork sealer um, from Traditions, but that uh, I was not able to find for this project. I'm not sure it's being made any longer, but you just need a nice, uh, this, this is an oil-based product, and I've, I'm gonna put several coats on this bird to really soak in. And then I'm gonna be putting a primer coat over this sealer, and then over that is gonna go the uh, acrylic paint, and then over that gets a, a lacquer sealer as a final coat. So by the time we're done with this bird, it should be pretty water resistant and ready for the hunting blind. To start things off on the keel, I'm going to mix up a little two-part DevCon 5-minute epoxy. I'm using a, an old paintbrush handle. And once I mix that up, I like to put that inside the keel anchor line hole and roll that around to embed that in the open grain. There's a lot of open grain inside these holes and we don't want water soaking into the keel from those locations. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the keel screw holes. And I like to go both directions from the downside and then from the upside. And that, that assures that you get good coverage inside the, the screw hole. Just speeding up the video here so you can see the process but not spend too much time. Then I like to seal the end grain as well with a little of the two-part epoxy. You probably should be using a rubber glove to do this, but in the interest of time, I just went ahead and used my finger. Probably not a good practice. But that really seals up the end grain because it's hard to seal that end grain with just the spray alone. All right, I didn't want to make a video just you watching me spray uh, this on the bird. So I did that yesterday and uh, I put probably four coats of the spar urethane on here and let it dry between coats. And uh, you can see it's this is a semi-gloss is what I'm using. We've got a good um, sheen and coating on the cedar bottom board. And you can see a little bit of a sheen on the uh, cork itself. I really tried to lay it on pretty thick so that it's soaking down into all those um, pores in the cork. The head is sealed up nice. And uh, then on the bottom keel, I've 
hit that with about four or five coats as well. Now, before um, I go to the lead and, and test floating the decoy, I did have a question about what do I use to strike the water line on decoys. So I wanted to give just a quick, this is a homemade device, but I think it's, it's worth covering here. It's just a couple of pieces of oak. It's a simple design, but I thought it might be valuable for people to make their own if, if you're interested. This is just a short piece of oak. It's probably five inches long. Drilled a bolt hole through there. And then I slotted a quarter inch piece of oak, as you can see, to give myself about an inch and a quarter adjustment. And that goes over the bolt and then just use a wing nut and then just drilled a press fit hole for the pencil to go through so that you can hold that in place. And then this is adjustable up and down. You know, and I put this at about the minimum uh, draft I'm going to have is maybe a half an inch. The maximum is up there around inch and a half. That's all I need for adjustment. So what I use that for is on the pattern, I adjust that to where I, my pattern says the water line should be. And then you can use that on the bird to strike a line around the decoy. I am not going to do that on this decoy because this cork, I don't want to press that pencil into the cork and damage the coatings that I put on there. Instead, on this decoy, I'm just going to use the bottom board as a guideline, and I know I want to be about a quarter inch above that uh, three-quarter inch uh, bottom board. So as I'm floating, I'm just going to use that as my guideline. But on most wooden decoys, I use this device to strike a line. That way during flotation, you can make sure that you balance your decoy so that it's hitting that line all the way around the perimeter of the decoy. So just a quickie on that. Hopefully somebody can use that and you can make your own. And it's really handy. I use it for just about every decoy I make. Based on experience and kind of the size and shape of this decoy, I'm going to look at eight ounces of lead and I use this lead strap material. Um, I did a separate video on how I build my keels. This is a little different because I'm using cedar for the keel. It's three quarter inches wide where I normally use uh, one inch wide walnut or oak. So I'm looking at uh, being creative here. I want to embed this lead in this keel. I have enough room if I put these on their side and they're going to end up hopefully down in the keel in about that position. So I also know on a diver decoy, generally the weight needs to be further to the rear of the keel to keep that tail down. Um, whereas on a puddler, they normally, normally has to be weighted more front heavy to keep the tail up. So we'll give that a try. I'm going to tape these on with electrician's tape in the position that I think they should be in based on experience again, and then we'll test float and I could be totally wrong. You never know. It's sometimes surprising how a decoy reacts when you get it in the water. So let's let's uh, tape this up and get it ready to go. I don't think I want to screw the keel on at this time, so I'll probably tape that on as well and cover up these screw holes so that uh, no water gets in there. Because when I put the keel on for the final time, I'm going to put a bunch of sealer, glue it on, and make sure no water can get in those uh, screw holes. So I put some electrician's tape over those holes just to make sure no water is going to seep in there during the test. And I'm going to position my keel 
as much as possible in the center of the decoy. Like that. All right, I've got my keel positioned where it lines up with the keel screws and my eight ounces of lead temporarily in this position and we'll give it a test float, see how it looks in the water. All right, we're gonna find out together how we're doing here. I'm gonna put it in upside down. I think it's gonna, yeah, it's definitely gonna roll. Let's see where we are. It looks pretty good on this side. <clears throat> Look how it floats on the other side. Miraculously, it looks like it's floating level and just about a quarter inch above that bottom board line, which is where we want it. The tail is on the water, which is good. Let's see how it rolls again. want to make sure from all positions it's going to self-right. Seems to settle down pretty good. I'm actually going to try um, four ounces and just see what that looks like. All right, I'm back with four ounces of lead. I'm just curious to see if that's enough lead to make this roll over. And it is not. So that eight ounces original guess was, was pretty much right in the ballpark. This decoy, it, it, it rolls over in one direction, but not in this direction. The head is pretty tall. There's quite a bit of weight out there preventing it from rolling over. It's close, but uh, the other consideration is I'm not going to have this lead strip on the bottom of the keel. I'm going to have it embedded, so it's going to be a little bit not quite uh, so deep in the water, and that's going to make it even more challenging to roll over. So definitely going to go with the 8 ounces, but I'm happy with the way the decoy is floating. It's level. He looks great on the water. So let's go with the eight ounces in that rear position that I talked about. Okay, I'm gonna mark the position of that lead. I'm gonna have these on their sides as they slide down into the keel. And uh, you can use melted lead. This is just, I've gone to strap lead uh, so I don't have to melt lead and the fumes associated with that. But there are a lot of different approaches to weighting your keel. This is a new approach for me, as a matter of fact, because of the narrowness of the keel. So I'm gonna give this a try. I'm gonna use a half inch drill and kind of mill out a slot here that I can slide these down into. Uh, and we'll see if that works. I wanna get this lead as deep as I can in the keel to help with flotation. So I'm going to go down to maybe a, a quarter of an inch from the bottom, set my stop there, and then we'll drill this out. going to speed the video up and just make sure you keep your hands and fingers away from the drill bit. All right, now 
I've got a slot for my weights to go down in there and I'll uh, do a little Tupelo plug to put on top of that, seal this up so it's all watertight and we'll be ready to go. I made a little Tupelo plug to put in here and then I'll use the two-part DEVCON five-minute epoxy to glue that up. This is just the same as the um, keel construction video that I did, so I won't spend too much time on this. The two-part epoxy in there, that's all sealed up and watertight. We'll let that cure and then we can mount the keel. Now that the keel is in its final configuration, I'm gonna tape the keel back on. We're gonna go retest, make sure the decoy self-writes I'm not going to like it if it doesn't, but I'd rather know about it now rather than in the tank. All right, here we go. All right, it rolls over. I'm going to do that a couple of times from all different positions. Make sure that there's not a magic position that it's going to float on its side. Looks like we're good to go. There's also going to be a little additional weight with the addition of the screws in the keel. So I think we're good. I'm a happy camper. All right, I've got the uh, DEVCON five minute epoxy mixed up. I'm gonna put a little dab in each of the screw hole locations. Make sure I've got glue around that. Then I'm going to put glue on the top of the keel. mounting screws in position. I'm going to start each screw to make sure I'm in the right location. Feels like I am, so I'll go ahead and sock these down. See some glue coming out, that's good. So we have a nice watertight seal. Both front and back. And then I'll use a little paper towel just so we don't get too much glue coming out here. And that has a tendency to also spread the glue and pick up any gaps if there are any. All right, we're good to go. We've got a keel, it's weighted. We'll let that set, and then we can prime the decoy. This is a final touch. I'm just putting a little glue around the screw head just to seal out water so it doesn't get in around that area. Now I'm just gonna take some 320 grit, very fine sandpaper, and just do a light sanding over everything, being careful not to scratch the eyes. But uh, this will take 
a little bit of the gloss off and promote bonding between these base sealer coats and the primer that I'm going to put on top of it. So I'll finish that sanding job and then we'll come back and prime the decoy. On this particular decoy, I really like the look of the uh, natural cedar down below and it's sealed up well, so I'm going to mask that off to leave it natural wood down there and then prime above that uh, area. It's totally up to you how you want to handle that. That's just my preference on this particular decoy. You could go ahead and prime the whole thing and add some additional coats of protection if, if you desire. All right, I've got the bottom masked off with painter's tape and I'm going to use Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Ultra Cover Flat Gray Primer and uh, go ahead and spray it on the bird. And I will shorten this video, but I'll show you the, the results after I'm done spraying. Okay, that's a wrap on the Drake Canvas Back Magnum Size Cork Bodied Hunting Decoy. Pretty happy with the way he turned out, and I think he'll have a lot of character uh, when I'm done with him. This was a suggestion by one of the viewers. Hey Tom, could we do a simpler decoy? Uh, especially for people just starting out, it can be pretty intimidating to jump right into something with a, a lot of feather carving. And I get that. And this is where most people should start and stay. If you enjoy uh, making hunting decoys, this is a great place to be. It, it helps you get your pattern right, your shapes right. By the way, I've had a lot of requests for patterns. And I just don't want to sell patterns right now. I, I want to encourage people to make their own patterns. I've got a separate video on that. If you need to check that out on how to make your own pattern, there's a lot of great reference material out there. And I think it's a great part of the fun of decoy carving is being able to generate your own patterns. And speaking of fun, that's what decoy carving is all about. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the camaraderie of decoy carving. And in that regard, I wanted to mention the Ohio Decoy Show is coming up March 17th through the 19th, Independence, Ohio, the Holiday Inn there. It's my home show. It's been going on for many, many years. A lot of great people there. There'll be a huge crowd of carvers, hunters, decoy collectors. It's just a fantastic show to go to. So I wanted to put a little pitch in for that. If you're in the area, March 17th through the 19th, definitely check it out. It's a good place to talk to people, to get tips. I'll be there. Hopefully we can meet there. Um, but there will be a lot of good carvers there that you can talk to and, and get help from. If you want to know more about that, go to the ODCCA website. Just Google it, Ohio Decoy Carvers and Collectors Association. They have all the information on the show, the location, the categories of competition, etc. You can find it there. So I appreciate you tuning in to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I appreciate that. And uh, we have over a thousand 50 people now, and that's exciting to me. So until next time, good carving to all of you. Tom Christie, signing out.